This is Sister Ella Jordan of the British Red Cross Society. She is here visiting an organiser about a talk she is to give on her work. There has not been much time devoted to giving talks in our life. In 1934, Sister Jordan worked with a Methodist mission in China and was interned by the Japanese. Later she joined the British Red Cross and in 1947 helped in German refugee camps. In 1949 there were refugees in the Middle East to care for. In 1951 Sister Jordan was sent to bandit-infested Malaya. Then in September 1953, with Sister Dora Dedman, Sister Jordan was sent to another trouble spot. Seoul Red Cross Hospital stood in the center of the South Korean capital. It was a severely damaged group of buildings when the Red Cross nursing sisters arrived. There was no wall left unmarked in the bombardment of the city. There was hardly any water supply, scarcely any electricity, and no sanitation. The position was desperate for the Korean Red Cross officials attempting to keep the hospital running. The director, Dr. Sohn, a versatile man who had studied medicine in the United States, welcomed the help of the British Red Cross Society. The help was particularly welcome in connection with the training of nurses in the Korean Red Cross Nurses Training School. The work here had been interrupted by the fighting and most of the equipment lost. The first job was to clean the buildings. As there was not even a rag to be found in the hospital, a quantity of cleaning materials was obtained with the help of the army. The British Red Cross sent 200 pounds for the immediate purchase of medical supplies when Sister Jordan's first report was received in London. Oil drums were provided to store the meagre water supplies on each floor. There were fewer than half the nurses and doctors required. Only 20 staff nurses, 30 student nurses and 10 doctors to work in all the wards and clinics. There were 200 bed patients and 400 outpatients and people were flooding back into Seoul at this time just after the truce at the rate of three to four thousand a day. Many of these refugees were in great need of attention. An important step was to restart the training school for the nurses so that skilled help would be available in the wards. Sister Jordan undertook this laborious task with her colleague, having to teach the nurses through an interpreter. Special classes in ward administration were given to the senior nurses. Since the nurses' home had been destroyed, they were living in what was formerly an isolation ward. All the equipment for their training came from the British Red Cross. The British Red Cross Society supplied and equipped a mobile clinic that could visit the outlying districts. The clinics were held always on the same day each week, as patients would gather from miles around at the chosen centre, usually the headman's hut or house in the village. These clinics met a very real need, particularly in those areas where there were large concentrations of refugees. The staff of the mobile clinic consisted of a Korean doctor, a nurse, a dispenser, one of the Red Cross nursing sisters, and a driver. Pneumonia, whooping cough, a few cases of smallpox, some unpleasant skin complaints, these would constitute a typical surgery, together with accident cases, of which there was a tragically high number caused on the roads. The clinic would get underway. A chest complaint? something in the eye. From the very young to the very old, there would be a constant procession of cases. Often a refugee would refuse to go to the hospital for an operation as it meant temporary separation from his family. So the sterilizer would be called into action and the operating team, scrubbed up and sterile, would operate on the spot. This created difficulties of all sorts when there might be 200 cases a day for the clinic to treat. Supplementary foods were always taken out with the clinic for cases of malnutrition, of which there was a number. An appeal to the British Red Cross Society branches throughout Britain produced no fewer than 2,287 parcels of hospital linen and clothing for Korea by the end of 1954. 
two welfare officers from the British Red Cross travelled out to Korea to aid civilian relief work. As well as the patients discharged from the hospital in need of care, there were hundreds of orphan children roaming the streets of Seoul, and many refugees had nowhere to live. Bundles of clothing were distributed by these two workers in the villages. Winter can be cruelly cold in these parts, so this added protection was gratefully received. The laboratory work had been badly affected by shortages when the Red Cross sisters arrived, and there was only one trained pharmacist. But supplies and equipment were sent out from Britain, and Dr. Soane was particularly pleased when a microscope came. With the arrival of these gifts, laboratory work once more progressed. There were sick children, both in the wards and at Inchon Sanatorium, suffering from malnutrition, meningitis, dysentery, accidents of all kinds, and, worst of all, burns. At Sister Jordan's suggestion, the British Junior Red Cross played a notable part by sending many hundreds of toys to cheer the solemn little faces in the wards. To make the rooms more cheerful, travel posters that had reached the hospital were pasted up. There was a continual drive for cleanliness. It began when the first cleaning materials were bought from Naffy, and it continued until Sister Jordan and Sister Deadman had seen the buildings whitewashed from top to bottom. The hospital laundry for a long time consisted of two Korean women who pounded and scrubbed the entire hospital wash. When linen became available for all the beds, the laundry was overwhelmed. So a mobile laundry unit was obtained, purchased in part with a grant from the United Nations Korean Reconstruction Agency, and a local army field laundry accepted up to 400 sheets a week. Cleanliness possible, surgery possible. The operating theatre, with its highly organised teamwork, began to function again. After nearly two years' work, Sister Jordan had 30 staff nurses, 150 student nurses, and the hospital beginning to run smoothly. The purpose of sending British Red Cross trained nurses to Korea had been to help the South Korean Red Cross reorganise the hospital at Seoul. From days when the surgical instruments had been kept in rusty cigarette tins for lack of a better place, and not a single lavatory had worked, from those days to the time when the hospital had been spring clean from top to bottom, and the nurses even had made a recreational garden, the two sisters had shown initiative and courage in tackling their many problems. Sister Jordan was awarded the MBE in 1954. A year later, the International Committee of the Red Cross conferred on her the Florence Nightingale Medal, a rare distinction. This, then, is her story, Operation Mercy. The crisis in Korea may be ended, but the work of the British Red Cross Society continues in many ways. You could help. By training now with the Red Cross, you could help to write the first chapters of such a story as that of Ella Jordan. Please, act now.